There's no mistake in our reservation for seven people. I'd appreciate if you could prepare a separate seat for this lady who isn't included in the count. It was characteristic of Elizabeth, who is my husband's mother, to loudly make such demands, always taking pleasure in teasing me. However, days like this would likely come to an end today. Because I know a secret she's been keeping. And in today's family gathering, I've resolved to expose it all. My name is Natalie. I'm 28 years old and work as a chef. I successfully graduated from culinary school and have since been working at a highly rated Western restaurant in the city. It was there that I met George, a friendly customer who would become my husband. George inherited a historic electronic store that has been loved by the community for three generations. Last year, his father passed away, and since then George has taken over as the third generation owner. I was raised in a normal looking household, but my father, mother, and even my brother are all professionals in the culinary world. Growing up in such an environment, I've been exposed to a wealth of cooking techniques and knowledge from a young age. Thanks to this upbringing and my innate talent, I graduated at the top of my class from culinary school. I'm usually reserved, but I've always been confident in my culinary skills. However, after marrying George, that confidence began to waver a bit. This was due to the close living arrangement with Elizabeth that began shortly after our marriage. It was common for George to live in the same house with his parents. After his father's death, he was genuinely concerned for his grieving mother. Seeing that, I agreed to his request to live together. I had strongly hoped to enjoy the early days of marriage just the two of us. I did imagine that George, being the eldest son, would live with his parents eventually. But I never thought it would be right after our marriage. If he had conveyed this earlier, we could have discussed it before getting married. Maybe he didn't want to upset me or had his own reasons. Regretting it now wouldn't change anything. When we started living together, Elizabeth was kinder than I expected. She would buy me cream puffs from my favorite bakery and when it came to household chores, you're busy, so it's okay to slack off a bit. She took on most of the housework. However, there was one thing that concerned me. She prepared our daily meals, but the seasoning was a bit different from my taste. Every dish was very salty. I had previously heard that Elizabeth was from the northern regions, so I thought it might be characteristic of that area. I recall seeing information in magazines or on TV shows stating that people from the northern regions prefer saltier tastes but I understood that this was just one perspective or general information. In fact, I have a colleague at work from the North who always says she prefers a lighter salt taste. Yet, the dishes Elizabeth made were vastly different from what I'd heard or from my colleague's preference. For instance, when looking at her stew, even though the ingredients should have vibrant colors, they were overshadowed by the intensity of the sauce. Tasting it felt like directly putting concentrated sauce in my mouth, if the food doesn't have enough flavor, it doesn't feel satisfying, right? Natalie, please eat plenty. With inner doubts thinking, is this the standard taste? I looked to see my husband's reaction, and he commented, Did you adjust the taste to be a bit lighter today? Yes, I considered Natalie's preference and made it a tad lighter than usual. I thought to myself, this is considered light? I can hardly describe the surprise I felt at that moment as these days continued, possibly due to consistently consuming Elizabeth's cooking, my taste buds began to dull. At work, when preparing dishes, I started doubting my own sense of taste. Thankfully, the final taste checks were done by the head chef, so there were no major issues. However, for me, it was a serious concern. To cope with Elizabeth's heavy seasoning in daily meals, I devised a plan. One of the solutions was to wake up earlier than her and prepare my own breakfast. This new routine helped prevent a decline in my work performance. But this new approach backfired, making Elizabeth's attitude towards me frosty. When I greeted her in the morning, she began to ignore my words and pass by. One evening, when I asked her opinion on a dish I'd put a lot of effort into, she responded, Did you really season this properly? I understand you're busy, Natalie, but the basics of cooking are important. I use seasoning adequately when preparing this. I believe it has a rich taste. Despite my reply, she continued. That's why I'm saying it's bland. You can't even understand such a basic thing. But adding more seasoning wouldn't be healthy, don't you think? What's wrong with enjoying delicious food? Don't overestimate yourself just because you can cook a bit. 
Saying this, she added a significant amount of sauce to the dish I had prepared. Do they think I'm acting arrogant? I'm also considering health issues. I felt that there might be some reason or background to her change in attitude. My husband has two older sisters, both of whom have established their own families and are living with their husbands and children. Both sisters were very friendly and had warmly welcomed me from the beginning of our marriage. If you ever have trouble or concerns with our mother, let us know, we'll intervene and help. Such encouragement made me feel cherished, even though we had just gotten to know each other. The husbands they chose were also very friendly and helped create a harmonious atmosphere within the family. Especially Emily has a lovely five-year-old daughter and a grand birthday celebration for her was planned at her house. I was asked to help with food preparation, which I gladly accepted. As a result, the dining table was filled with a variety of dishes. Each dish was distinctively unique, colorful, and very appetizing. As the party began, My daughter really loves the spaghetti from the restaurant where Natalie works. Being able to enjoy that taste at home is wonderful. Emily said, full of admiration. I'm truly happy to hear that. Please eat a lot. I replied, unable to hide my joy. Thank you for making this spaghetti, it's really delicious. She expressed her gratitude with sparkling eyes. Everyone, please try this stew I made, it's exceptional. She said, slightly shyly, offering her dish to Emily's daughter. That stew makes my mouth feel spicy when I eat it, so I don't like it. Emily's daughter frowned and declined. Um, can I have some more water? He said after trying a few bites, barely keeping a smile. His glass was completely empty after a few sips. Mom, I've always felt your seasoning is a bit heavy, but today's is especially so. Maybe you can learn some cooking tips from Natalie? Shut up. She exclaimed angrily and left the scene. I somewhat regretted offering to help with the cooking from the start. Amidst the sour mood, the party ended quickly. I'm sure Emily meant her words lightly, but not just me. Elizabeth must have put love and effort into her dishes as well. It felt unjust for our heartfelt efforts to be belittled with a mere comment. I'm truly sorry for causing trouble today. That night, I mistered the courage to express my apologies to her. You should try not to act so high and mighty. This isn't your house after all. She responded coldly, much sharper than I'd anticipated. From the next day, life became increasingly tough. She would recklessly season the meals I'd carefully prepared and on the worst days, she'd even throw them away midway through eating. I turned to my husband, seeking support in these trying times. Did you, by any chance, antagonize her? Maybe you should try listening more. Aren't you overreacting a bit? He failed to take my distress seriously. Moreover, despite being married for only half a year, he began coming home late, often not until midnight. He'd claim it was work, but he even started missing family events like Emily's daughter's birthday party. The strain in our marital relationship deepened with each passing day. We were married for only half a year, so the idea of divorce felt premature. But then, another hurdle arose. Elizabeth tripped on our stairs and severely injured her leg. Although Emily kindly offered to help with her care. You're the wife of this house in name, right? So, it's only natural for you to take care of me. Ever since that declaration, my daily life dramatically changed. From minor tasks to major requests, attending to her needs became a daily routine. Even during work hours, I'd frequently receive calls from her, disrupting my tasks to cater to her whims. Initially, my colleagues were understanding, but their patience wore thin due to constant interruptions. I eventually decided to resign. When Elizabeth learned about it... So, you've quit your job. How pitiable. She deezed, clearly unable to hide her glee. Ever since then, my days were consumed with meeting Elizabeth's spontaneous demands. At all hours, both my mind and body were worn down. My husband's reduced presence at home weighed heavily on my heart. According to him, due to work-related demands, he often had to spend nights at the office. But I couldn't shake off my doubts and found it hard to believe him. I began to ponder our next steps. I couldn't stand by and do nothing any longer. Amidst these thoughts, I concluded that I should teach Elizabeth and husband a lesson. A few days later, on a bright morning, an opportunity arose. 
The three of us sat down for breakfast together. I've been thinking that maybe it's time for us to consider getting a divorce. At my words, both of them looked back in shock. What? This is so sudden. We're still newlyweds. Also, aren't you the one worried about what people will think? Are you suspecting I'm cheating on you? I'd never even think of that. I'm truly surprised. Do you intend to tarnish our family's reputation over this? Natalie, aren't you being a bit thoughtless? You rarely come home, and mom constantly belittles me. I can't be satisfied in such a household environment. I've made up my mind. Confronted with my newfound resolve, they were taken aback. I'm sorry. I'll try to be more attentive to our home life. Even if you'd like to take a break and go to your parents for a change of pace, I'll understand. But considering mom's leg injury, could you still help her out for a while? Seeing my husband apologize, I felt a bit disoriented. But I could also sense a slight hint of resentment in him. I'd like you to reflect a bit more on the events that transpired. There are many things I'm not content with either. But can't we keep trying to live together? Maybe your feelings might change, and we might change too. At those words, I took a deep breath and tersely replied, I'll think about it. At that moment, a smug smile appeared on their faces. Seeing that expression, their blood ties were evident. For the next few days, the atmosphere at home shifted. My husband began returning home earlier from work. However, this peace was short-lived. He started coming home late again, and Elizabeth's behavior reverted to its previous coldness. While her injury didn't seem to be improving, she frequently went out. As I questioned her actions, I was soon to discover a shocking truth. One day, my cell phone rang incessantly. The callers were my husband and Elizabeth. Natalie, where are you right now? Why did you leave mom all by herself? What happened? His voice was filled with anger and I felt he wouldn't understand my perspective. I'm at my parents' house right now. But didn't you agree to me returning home? That was supposed to be a temporary solution. Mom isn't fully recovered yet. What went wrong? Amidst the noise in the background, I recognized the distinct voice of Elizabeth. I'll never return to that house. I want all future communications to go through lawyers. Saying this calmly, I hung up. For the next few days, I enjoyed a peaceful time at my parents' house. My parents cooked my favorite dishes, and I felt deeply grateful for every meal. In return, I also cooked for them. Natalie, your cooking is still the best. Hearing this from my mother, tears of happiness welled up in my eyes. On one of these peaceful days, I received an unexpected message. Seeing the name displayed on my smartphone screen, I was momentarily stunned. It was from the one person I least wanted to be involved with, Elizabeth. The message contained an apology for her past actions and an invitation to her upcoming birthday party. Honestly, I didn't want to accept the invitation. However, the venue was a renowned restaurant, which is rare to get a reservation. Considering it as a bit of a luxury treat, I decided to attend and conveyed my intention. Elizabeth seemed even happier than expected and shared the details. And then the day came. The venue was an upscale restaurant near the station becoming increasingly popular among food enthusiasts. The reason being, a new chef who had trained in France and had recently returned after rigorous training overseas. His dishes were acclaimed as authentically French, receiving rave reviews from gourmets in the city. Upon arriving at the main entrance of the restaurant, I saw George and Elizabeth already waiting. Recognizing me, they both wore a surprisingly smug expression. The attendees of the party were the same as last time, Emily, her husband, their children. It was a small gathering of eight people. The topic of divorce hadn't been shared with my them yet, and I planned to break the news at the end of the night. After a while, they arrived with smiles on their faces. Natalie, it's been so long. You look a bit slimmer. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. And so, we headed into the restaurant. Excuse me, the reservation list indicates seven people. Could you please confirm? I was internally surprised. Yes, my reservation for seven people is correct. Could you prepare a separate seat for this lady? She was clearly referring to me. Wait, Natalie, why is this happening? I'm as surprised as you are. It seems there's a surprise tonight.
I'll ask the waiter if they can accommodate service at another seat. The waiter kindly guided me to a different seat, positioned in a way that it was slightly hidden from them. As everyone sat down and started eating, This spaghetti tastes just like the one Natalie makes. I felt warmed by her comment. This restaurant's dishes have become even more delicious since they got the new chef. Especially the meat dish that's coming out later, it's highly recommended. George nodded in agreement. The anticipated meat dish was brought, and its lavishness raised everyone's expectations. Delicious smelling dishes were constantly being brought to Emily's table. Meanwhile, not a single dish had been served to George and Elizabeth. Why is our food taking so long? Her voice was quite loud, causing nearby customers to glance over. I deeply apologize. The chef is preparing something special for the two of you, so it's taking a little extra time. Please wait for just a bit longer. Despite her annoyance, Elizabeth's face showed a hint of satisfaction knowing they were getting special treatment. Hmm, a chef's special dish. That's exciting. Soon after, footsteps could be heard coming from the kitchen. Their expressions froze in surprise because it was me, dressed in a chef's hat and apron. What, Natalie? Why are you dressed like that? Oh, this must be Natalie's surprise. This is really fun. While Emily and her husband enjoyed my appearance, George and Elizabeth were taken aback. I gently smiled and set the specially arranged dishes before them. I've prepared a special menu just for the two of you. At the center of Elizabeth's plate, a beautiful black lump was garnished with a rich sauce. I've accentuated this using a special sauce. I'll add a little more topping to this sauce. Pouring more sauce on the dish, I felt satisfied seeing Elizabeth's surprised face. And here's a special dish for you, sir. On George's plate, various batteries were beautifully aligned, each shining brightly. Also, please try it with this special sauce. Placing an elegant sauce bottle on the table. Watching the service, Emily's daughter laughed cheerfully. They looked a bit surprised yet intrigued. They both were reddening with anger. This is unbelievable. I've never seen such inappropriate service. Call the manager. I'm the person in charge here. Is there a problem? Are you the one allowing such disrespectful service? This is unforgivable. We're going to exercise our rights as customers and sue you. Feel free but we're also considering legal action for the disruption you've caused. How dare you? It turns out that they often visited this restaurant, always being demanding. They constantly complained about the food. The staff already saw them as problematic customers. Until now, considering our familiar relationship, we've treated you with leniency. But now that Natalie has chosen to distance herself from you too, we will treat you impartially. Is that okay, Natalie? Of course, Peter. Elizabeth and George were utterly stunned upon realizing that the person in charge of this renowned restaurant was my brother. In reality, this popular restaurant was a product of Peter's diligent management and hard work. They had not been informed of this fact. Peter had previously undergone advanced training in France, and because of his work commitments, he was unable to attend our wedding. Although he had sent a generous wedding gift, he had never spoken with Elizabeth or George before. However, he remembered their faces because he had received pictures from family gatherings. I couldn't attend the wedding, so I wanted to greet you when you visited. But every time you both seemed too busy with your guest. Elizabeth and George seemed lost for words upon hearing this. We didn't know any of this. Could you explain? Even though she sounded cheerful, the slight shadow in her eyes showed she was taking this matter seriously. Actually, we came here to dine with some shopkeepers from the town's marketplace. It's trendy these days to have dinner in such modern restaurants. At that moment, a staff member approached politely. During your last visit, you left behind an item. Please allow me to return it. Handing over a shimmering earring. You often dine here with men wearing earrings. Isn't that a bit risky? I was momentarily surprised by Emily's question but chuckled. Well, it's not exactly like that. You see, he's secretly involved with the woman who works at the flower shop across the street. George's face momentarily froze in surprise. How did I come to know of this secret? A few weeks ago, I had felt suspicious and hired a detective to investigate. 
As a result, I had obtained several photos of him enjoying dinner with her at this restaurant and even moments where they entered a hotel together. To be honest, I felt more comfortable with her. Marrying you was a mistake. I'm planning to file for divorce. Just be prepared. This was the first time George had openly spoken about divorce. But for me, it was a moment I had anticipated. Just don't forget to pay the alimony. Ah, uh, don't worry. I recently secured a big business deal, and financially, I'm pretty well off now. I'll gladly pay all of the alimony in full. Hearing that gives me peace of mind. Now, about you, Elizabeth. Until now, Elizabeth had been wide-eyed at the unfolding conversation. She was a regular at this upscale restaurant and was known by the staff. What do you want from me? Since my husband passed away, I don't think anyone has the right to complain about my behavior. Actually, I had a detective thoroughly investigate your secrets too. It turned out you've been in a secret relationship for five years. But wasn't it just a year ago that your husband passed away? What are you talking about? Emily and her siblings, hearing this for the first time, stared at their mother in shocked anger. For them, who had deeply cherished their father, this revelation was unbearable. Although I too was surprised by the investigation's outcome when I asked the detective why he knew so much about Elizabeth, it turned out that their father had once hired the same detective agency. You deceived him for so long, even while he was still alive, and George, even while with Natalie, you were seeing another woman? How could you? In Emily and her siblings' eyes, deep anger and disappointment shone. The tense atmosphere at our table had caught the attention of other diners, who started glancing our way. We promised to resolve this matter at home and called it a night for the dinner. As I left, I high-fived the restaurant staff and Peter, expressing my gratitude. A few days later, under the stern gaze of Emily and her siblings, George and I proceeded with the formal divorce process. Now I'm free. I won't regret anything, no matter what happens. He stated confidently. I never expected this outcome. Even after I told you about my bad leg, I never imagined being treated this way. Ah, uh, watch your step. What? She recoiled in surprise. In truth, her leg had already healed. Yet she had been pretending to be in pain to maintain a superior attitude towards me. Her behavior once again left me in shock. For me, from now on, both she and my husband will be strangers. Although our marriage ended within a short span of a year, I had no regrets whatsoever. A few days later, when I checked my bank account, I was shocked to see that the alimony from both my husband and his mistress had been deposited simultaneously. It seemed like my husband covered her share as well. Knowing this fact, I could finally view them as no longer being a part of my life. Subsequently, there were some interesting developments regarding my husband and his mistress's relationship. He had gone into debt to pay the hefty alimony, but shortly after our divorce was finalized, she dumped him quite easily. From the information I received from Emily, it was revealed that the woman is infamous in the area for targeting married men. After the episode at the restaurant, we were informed by Peter that the regular patrons were also fed up with George and Elizabeth's antics, and they were elated by our surprise. From then on, the restaurant strictly prohibited those two from entering. Moreover, their dishonest attitudes quickly became known throughout the community. A major contract that my husband had been boasting about was eventually cancelled. His electronic store had been sustained by the deep trust of the local community. Now that this trust has been lost, it's not hard to imagine that future management will be challenging. Elizabeth's subsequent life became quite difficult. Suddenly abandoned by her longtime lover, further medical tests revealed that her unhealthy lifestyle was affecting her health. Her health condition was significantly tied to her own way of living, which wasn't deserving of any sympathy. On the other hand, I was fortunate enough to return to the Western-style restaurant where I used to work. At this restaurant, even though they knew about my past, the staff and management warmly welcomed me back. The Spaghetti Lady Emily and her family still came to this restaurant often, and their presence was a significant support for me. They had decided to completely sever ties with George and Elizabeth. The anger towards their actions, especially after the passing of their father and the revelation of the truth, left a deep wound in their hearts, which seemed unlikely to heal. The joy of cooking holds a significant place in my life. Feeling this happiness is the very moment I cherish the most and when I feel truly blessed.